Good evening and welcome to the Millbury City Council meeting of January 28th, 2020. Can we have a roll call, please? Four council members are present. Councilman Bruce Hoffman. Present. Councilman Jeff Hoffman. Present. Right, will you please stand and join in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, um, so first on our agenda, we have a commendation for the Millbury Community Foundation student volunteers. And we have uh, some members from MCF. We have Maureen Davis, Kathy Quigg, Dennis Fama, uh, Lynn Ferrario, Janet Fogarty. And we also have our student volunteers we would like to honor, uh, Stella Baltazar and Samantha Lamb. Uh, can you please join at the podium? Kathy, Kathy or, uh, oh, and Debbie Van Wart's here as well. Um, Kathy or Maureen, would you like to uh, make a, oh, sure. say a few words? Sure. Oh, the girls are here, there they are. Okay, great. So uh, I'm Maureen Davis with the Millbrook Community Foundation and these two young lung ladies helped us with our holiday stars this year. If you remember back to the holiday tree lighting, all those beautiful silver stars are painted as an acknowledgement and thank you for people who uh, make a donation to the Community Foundation. And uh, this year we raised a little bit more than $10,000 with their efforts, so they were very instrumental in helping us do that. And we painted over 100 stars collectively, so thank you very much. The city's giving you a commendation, and so are we. Go ahead. Okay. We have a commendation from the city as well. So for Stella, there we go. Congratulations. And for Samantha. Okay. Um, should we bring the council up for a photo? Well, for, first, would you like to say a few words? Okay. <laughs> More pressure there. <laughs> uh, thank you for this opportunity. I really enjoyed doing this, and I hope to serve the Mowbray community in the future. Thank you very much for this opportunity. I'm very glad that I was able to help you guys with what talents I could offer. Uh, you're volunteering and all of your help with, with the, the efforts and um, you know, we couldn't have done it without you. We thank the, and we thank the MCF for all the hard work you do and all the various projects that you help to do fundraising for. So glad that it was a successful uh, holiday tree uh, fundraiser. And uh, can I have a, a group photo, please? Okay. Is one coming from the podium? Yeah, 
guys want to look right here? <laughs> right here? Oh, I'll wait for it. One, two, three. Great. maybe say a few words about some of the projects that um, you are, have been fundraising for? Sure. Um, <clears throat> the Millbrae Community Foundation uh, raises money to give out grants, and they can be hyper-local to an Eagle Scout that's doing a project to um, more regional organizations that help with things like domestic violence and homelessness, to everything in between. We give scholarships to the high schools. Um, we've given money to MCTV, to the Historical Society, to some of our schools with individual product projects so um, if you're interested in helping community <coughs> foundation um, fill the holes the little gaps that make Millbury better feel free to donate to us anytime it's millburyfoundation.org for more information okay. wonderful thank you Maureen Okay, uh, next on the agenda, we have the agenda overview and staff briefing, and we have our city manager, Tom Williams. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Mayor Holliber, members of the city council, Tom Williams, city manager. Um, before I get into the agenda, I would just like to make a few announcements. Um, we are going to have a very busy day here in the city of Millbrae this Saturday, February 1st. Uh, we have noticing in your purple folder um, and uh, has gone out to the community of a gateway at Millbrae Station uh, development project. Um, community meeting. This is a follow-up to the meeting that we had uh, latter part of last year. Uh, we, we told the community, the neighborhood, that we would have monthly meetings, but due to the holidays, um, we did not have a meeting, and so this is a meeting of, to follow up. Um, construction, um, there's an item on the agenda later on tonight, um, has started for undergrounding and utility work, and this will bring uh, the neighborhood and everyone up to date on expectations and scheduling. So that is at 9 a.m. out at the um, uh, surface parking area on the east side of the BART parking garage. Also on February 1st at 10 a.m. Uh, is the Millbury Recreation Millbury Rotary Club. Uh, they will be hosting a disc golf course dem demo day. Um, last year, as you may recall, the Millbury Rotary Club in the city of Millbury teamed up to analyze and appropriate space along the Spur Trail uh, for a potential uh, disc golf course. And with the help of veteran disc golf course designer, uh, Mr. Leonard Muse, who is probably the country's foremost golf test. He, he had an amazing in, uh, presentation and in, in neighborhood workshop. Uh, but before moving forward uh, to perhaps finalize uh, the locations, we'd like to invite all the local residents out and anybody that has an interest in uh, participating and, and learning how to play and um, demoing uh, what a disc golf course is. So that, again, that's at 10 a.m. It'll be, everyone will meet at Mosta Grove Park. Uh, and it will go two hours until noon. Um, also, I'd like to announce the Millbrae Spring Art Show and Contest that's coming up. So if you're interested in, enter, in entering the uh, Millbrae Art Show and Contest, the Spring Art Show, uh, it's open to adults, seniors, young adults, and school-aged children who live, work, or go to school here in Millbrae. The show will be held on March 27th and 28th in the Millbrae Community Center's David J. Chikuti Room. And for more details or to submit art entries, please uh, see the announcement on our city's website, or you can contact the Recreation Department. We've also launched a new website to make it easier for accessing the city of Millbrae's uh, homepage and information. Um, the, domain, the domain name is simply now www.ci.millbrae.ca.us. And so, no, oh, excuse me, that's the old one. <laughs> the, other, the new one is millbrae.com. See, that's what happens when I read, so I just go, 
cityofmilbray.com. So cityofmilbray.com is all you need to type now, and that will take you to our website, cityofmilbray.com. And then lastly, I'd like to thank uh, all of the volunteers for the Martin Luther King Day of Service. Uh, we had... Um, about 45 people that came out to transplant rose bushes and, and other shrubbery from the uh, recreation center site to the community garden. So it was a fantastic day. We had um, teachers from um, Taylor Middle School, biology teachers and students. Um, some of them were able to receive credit for uh, community service, and it was uh, turned out to be a great day. So thank you to all the volunteers and everyone that participated. Okay, yes, Vice Mayor Schneider. City Manager, did you mean um, for the meeting this uh, Saturday at 9 o'clock for the Gateway Update, is it where the meeting was two months ago, which is at the end of Aviador as opposed to the surface parking lots at BART? Correct. It's at the end of the Avi at Aviador, but just, just east of the parking lot. Okay. So it's on Aviador, right-of-way, city of Millbrae, right-of-way, but just east of the parking sort lot. Sort of near the Bollards. Correct. Okay. That's right. And you'll see we'll have a pop-up City of Millbrae tent uh, just like last time. Thank you. Okay. Moving on to the agenda. We have approval of the meeting minutes, item number three for January 14th, 2020. There are no oral reports uh, for city committee and commission chairs. After that, we'll take public comment. That's for anybody from the public that would like to address the council on any item that's not on the current agenda this evening. Then moving to the consent calendar, item number five is to consider adoption of a resolution waiving the competitive procurement process and authorizing a $900,000 um, contract for Giardelli for construction management, construction inspection services for the TOD2 project at the BART station. This will be fully funded by the developer, not by the city. Item number six is a resolution authorizing the city manager or designee to execute the second amendment to the professional service agreement with New City America for work related to the continued formation of the business improvement district. Item number seven, the last item on the consent calendar is to consider a resolution accepting the 2019 pavement management project as complete and following that notice of completion. There are no public hearings this evening. Moving to existing business, we have three items. Item number eight under existing business is recommendation of artwork submitted by the Millbrae High School for utility box painting. Um, this includes one submittal from Cappuccino and one submittal from Mills High School. Item number nine is to reaffirm the citywide position opposing Senate Bill 50 and authorize the submission of the mayor's opposition letter. Item number 10 is to receive information and update on the Millbrae Recreation Center restoration project. Moving under new business, there's two items. Item number 11, first item under new business is to consider adoption of the fiscal year 2019-20 Sister Cities Commission Work Plan. Item number 12 is to consider adoption for the 2019-20 Senior Advisory Committee's Work Plan. And after that, Mr. Mayor, we move to council comments. There's no closed session this evening. Okay, thank you. Uh, oh. Councilman Lee? Uh, yes, thank you, City Manager. That was a good. Uh, thank you for the report. Um, so I have a question about the uh, the um, um, the website. Is it also the emails too? It's just the website. So, is the emails going to remain the same? Emails will remain the same. Yes. Okay. Um, and also, I just thank again staff for their work for the uh, Lunar New Year uh, festivities. It was, well, it was well attended. I'm, I don't know. I'm speaking into the mic. Closer. Okay, so um, yeah, I just wanna thank you and the staff. It was uh, uh, one of their biggest uh, attended, attended uh, festivities um, in a while. So, um, and, and, and all t had to do really with the partnership with the, pro the citizens and the, and the city's uh, uh, support. Thanks again. Thank you. And uh, City Manager Williams, uh, I know there have been some concerns regarding the coronavirus and um, the flights from Wuhan, whether or not they're coming into SFO. Um, can you provide an update on that for the public? Um, yes. As a matter of fact, I worked with uh, Chief Kunkel yesterday. We've reached out to um, the uh, 
Managing Director of SFO. And uh, SFO is screening uh, any flights coming in from China, uh, working with uh, the Center for Disease Control. There was a rumor that there was a flight coming in from Wuhan province, which is the epicenter that's been reported for the virus. Um, that was not correct. Um, they, they are evacuating. The U.S. is evacuating diplomats and, and U.S. citizens. They're actually flying into Anchorage, Alaska, not into SFO. And then from Anchorage, Alaska, they'll be flying to Los Angeles. Um, but the the um, the screening at the airport, um, according to the um, director of the airport, is uh, a partnership with Center for Disease Control, and they seem to have it well managed and, and um, under control. Okay, great. Thank you. All right, so next on our agenda is the approval of the minutes from January 14th, 2020. Um, can we have a roll call, please? Or, sorry, a motion, please. <laughs> okay, we have a motion from Councilwoman Pappen and a second from Vice Mayor Schneider. Uh, your votes, please. The minutes passed with a vote of four to zero with council member Oliva excused. Okay, thank you. Um, next on the agenda is public communication. And this is the opportunity for members of the public to speak on any item that is not on this evening's agenda. Um, speakers that have up to three minutes. Um, do we have any speakers for public comment on anything not on the agenda? Okay, seeing none, public communication is closed. So we will go on to the consent calendar, and we have uh, three items, items five, six, and seven. Uh, we have a motion to approve. Um, I'd like to pull the TOD to number five. Number five? Yes. Okay. So um, we'll remove item five from consent, and uh, do we have a motion for items six and seven? Yes. Okay, we have a motion from Councilman Lee, a second from Vice Mayor Schneider. Uh, your votes, please. Items number six and seven on the consent calendar passed with a vote of four to zero with Council Member Oliva excused. Okay, Vice Mayor Schneider, question okay. on item five. I, I shared some of these concerns with the city manager. Um, given Given how BART has treated the BART station, um, I'm sure Ghirardelli is a good company, and I just didn't see after reading the report how would we be updated with what's going on there to make sure that everything is happening to Millbrae's advantage. In this case, and for the public, we're using a management company that's already been on our pre-approved list, so that's fine. They're already working with BART, and in one way that's really good because they know the project area, but on the other side, they're going to be working for us for a couple of years but they'll be working for BART forever, um, or in theory, forever. So I just would like to know that there's a system that we're hearing what's going on and that they're actually working for us and not for BART, and that whatever changes are happening down there are in our favor. Um, the other area that I have concern is when I read through the contract, it does talk about the demolition phase, and since we didn't get the reuse of trees into the developer agreement, we're trying to negotiate after the fact to recover those trees and move them. So, for example, there's at least 15 really lovely magnolia trees that could be moved to the Monterey Park, which is clearly a very hot, um, flat place. It could work perfectly, but it's only going to be out of the kindness of their heart if they will let us do that. And if we've got Ghirardelli, how does Ghirardelli know that at least there is an interest from Community Enhancement Committee, from myself, I don't know about the other council members, to try to save these trees and repurpose them in another neighborhood? Um, so that's another one of my concerns. Um, there was a discussion of periodic night work, which when we went through the approvals of the TOD, we agreed not to have night work. Now to me, depending on what part of the BART project um, happens at night, it's gonna be away from housing, but if it's happening in that, in I think it's, five, it's 6A or 6B, site, the one that's going to run right by Highline Canal, if they're doing night work there and we've got residents right there that we have precautions, and I know the city manager has an answer for me. Um, the, those are just, I just want to make sure that we are as transparent as possible. And finally, we do have a web page uh, specifically for the Gateway Project if we can make sure that we're putting all of our announcements on that so that the public can find everything they want to know about the Gateway Project right there. 
With that, I'm happy to vote for it, but I had concerns. Okay, so um, in terms of the um, night work, uh, this is something that we talked to the contractor about. We, we represented that to the neighborhood and felt that because of traffic congestion and sort of th that we would allow it as long as we don't get any complaints. So the first complaint that we receive, we will shut down the night work uh, for the project. Um, so this is going to be something that we will manage and make sure that it's not a nuisance. And then in terms of uh, light, you know, glare from, from lighting, both if they do do night wear. And I think the night work is going to be very infrequent. We didn't say, you know, it's going to be something that happens every day, only on occasion um, for, for work. Um, glare, dust, noise. We have a 16 foot high screening that they've agreed to um, that will stretch down Highline Canal um, that will provide some attenuation uh, to the neighborhood uh, to the north. Uh, and then the, um, the trees, we've been working with uh, Republic Urban and we've identified um, the magnolia trees as well as a few other um, uh, um, London plane trees that they have agreed to remove and um, put in root balls so, and deliver them actually to our public works shop so we can get them replanted. So we are working on that. Also, Council Member Pappen um, has been um, uh, addressing the same situation uh, for, to us as well to save as many of those trees as we can. Thank you, and I understand, and for the public to understand, if there's some night work and it speeds up the total construction time, I, th I see that as a win. So I'm not opposed to night work, it's just how well it's done. And did you hear anything from the, the palm trees then? Who's um, taking ownership of the palm trees? Uh, Key Lim, our public works director, now acting community development director, which I will <laughs> inform the council of the reorganization interim very soon. <laughs> uh, we are communicating with several um, tree companies in Gilroy and San Jose about uh, possibly uh, repurposing those trees and get some uh, credit from them. Okay, I, I also did get a couple price quotes for them. So there's a range. It's, I don't know if I want to put it out there, but it's a pretty good range if we can take ownership of those and sell them. Um, definitely. If you could talk to us uh, separately, we'd appreciate that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Can I follow up? Yes, uh, Councilwoman Pepin. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm totally confused. I thought throughout the entire process we were requiring the trees and foliage to be repurposed um, for us, so I don't know how that got left out of any agreements. Uh, I thought we talked about that for a long time. Um, my concern, Mr. Um, Williams, is the community meetings we've had thus far. BART is doing nothing about the existing noise in the parking garage. So what sort of, I mean, we have zero assurance. They're not, they're just going to make more noise. This is completely unacceptable. They're not taking responsibility for those plates that are disrupting the neighborhood right now. So I don't see how we're getting any giving them any permits to do further noise if they don't take responsibility for the noise that exists now. The neighbors have been complaining for years and they do nothing. They clean the station once after six months. It's already dirty and disgusting. So uh, what control do we have here? This is, they, they walk all over us and I'm tired of it. So, so if I may, there are two separate things. One is that we, as the private development project commences, we as a city of Millbrae do have control over the area of lease land and, and land that's being developed. Um, we don't, as you, as you pointed out, there are still issues with the parking garage, the noise and, and the cleanliness and safety of the BART station that um, BART is responsible for management and managing. So I am actually meeting um, with the BART director this Thursday morning out at the site, out at the uh, station at 9 a.m. A couple of staff members will be joining me to continue with his listening tour and follow up and what they can do to provide more attention to the Millbrae Bar Station. Um, but there are two separate kind of two separate projects, the existing BART station, but then the land development side that we as the city of Melbourne do have control over. So if there are nuisance issues or if there are issues with not implementing the permit properly, we, the city of Melbourne, manage that process. 
I understand this is a different contract, and I would hope the city of Millbury pulls the environmental impact report because basically BART has underestimated their own development and their own um, circulation. We still haven't seen a circulation plan or a parking plan, and I don't know how things are able to go forward without those. So I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much for your indulgence along these lines. Mr. Mayor, if I may note, though, because I don't want any confusion with the public or, or anyone, that um, the building permits for the construction of the buildings um, are not, will not, be issued without the parking management plan being approved by the city. So we are working with Republic Urban on the parking management plan. We'll be reviewing that and they need to meet the satisfaction of uh, the city in terms of the parking management plan before we can uh, issue building permits. The grading permit and the demolition permit that were issued are pursuant to um, terms and definitions outlined in the development agreement. Yeah, yeah, thank you. You know, I had some concerns about this as well when I saw it on the agenda. And, you know, who is Ghirardelli really working for? Are they working for BART? Are they working for the city? Um, but it sounds like, really, we don't have any real liability here. And if there's any problem with any of the infrastructure, any of the work that gets done, it's on BART to fix it. Um, and we're the ones that would be enforcing that. Um, so let's go ahead and... Uh, I have a motion from Councilman Lee and a second from myself. Um, can I have your votes, please? Item number five passed with a vote of four to zero with Councilmember Oliva excused. Okay. Uh, Mr. Mayor, just, just for the public so everyone knows and they see this amount, which is a large amount, this is fully funded by the applicant. There's no money coming out of the city, right. so it's 100% reimbursable. Okay. And we had a request earlier from Councilman Lee to move up items 11 and 12 uh, ahead of existing business, um, since we have the chairs of the Sister Cities and Senior Advisory Committee um, present here. Um, oh. Question? Uh, yes, Vice Mayor. Do we, um, Culture Arts Committee, do we have the students who are part of the utility boxes here? We don't, so if we don't have students, we're not making them wait then. It's just. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead with item number 11, uh, the fiscal year 1920 Sister Cities Commission work plan. And we have our chair, uh, Robert Gottschalk. Emperor, <laughs> former mayor and, and emperor for life, uh, got shot. <laughs> well, hopefully going to go in one direction. Let yep. it be which, which one? It'll be this one, the right. Do you want to use the stationary or the handheld? Um, let me use the handheld. Okay. Mayor Holliver, Vice Mayor Schneider, members of the city council, I'm pleased to be able to be here tonight representing the Millbury Sister Cities Commission regarding the 2019-2020 work plan. And um, I'd like to draw your attention to the membership of the commission, particularly Mr. Tom Dowdy, who's been on the commission for 25 years, and former Mayor Doris Morse for nearly 20. At the same time, out of the 11 members, we have five whose terms are set to expire in five months. Hopefully we can retain each of those um, and we'll make every effort to do that if we can. So with regard to last year, 1819, uh, we did have a, a visit. A delegation from Hanyu, Japan came to see us in October of 2018. Mayor Kawada and two of his um, City staff came to see us at the time of our Japanese cultural festival, and this was in fact the third time that Mayor Kawada has visited Millbury. Then again, a, a delegation from Millbury uh, was blessed to be able to visit our sister city in Mosta, Malta last April. There were 18 of us who visited for about 20 days, had a wonderful trip, uh, thanks to Council General Louis Vela, who did almost all of the organizing of the trip. We had an absolutely terrific time. The celebrations in Malta, particularly Masta, of Good Friday and of Easter 
are just quite impressive. Uh, we had reserve seats right along the street of the parade, right across the street from the domed cathedral, from which we have the cornerstone, the cornice right outside the door here. It was fascinating, that and Easter Sunday as well. We visited Sicily, Mount Edna, the American Embassy, which is most fascinating, 7,000-year-old ruins, and got to meet outgoing president of Malta, Miss Preka. And then, once again, five of us were um, quite fortunate to be invited to go to our friendship city, Hanyu, in November of this year to help them celebrate their 65th anniversary as a city. We had a ter terrific visit once again. Uh, we joined forces with sister city representatives from Belgium and from the Philippines and um, we got to see Mount Fuji, Tokyo, and it was a brief visit, but it was extremely enjoyed by all of us and um, we look forward to further contact. Now, with regard to going forward to the 1920 work plan, uh, the first three items are fairly straightforward, but I will draw your attention to task four, in which we want to revive and bring back to life the relationship we've had for many years with La Serena, Chile. Uh, it's been quite dormant. The contact that we down, had down there with the mayor uh, has left her post, and we've made several efforts to contact the uh, new council general here in San Francisco to see if he will come and visit us at the commission meetings and see if there's a prospect of organizing a visit to La Serena one day soon. And then, of course, uh, we have, as a commission, recommended to the city council um, to arrange for a friendship city arrangement with Dongguang, China, uh, and we want to have communications and thought, uh, thoughts and and discussions of visits in both directions. And um, we look forward to doing that, hopefully, as time goes forward. So with that, I'll be glad to answer any questions. OK, thank you, Chair Gottschalk. Uh, yes, Vice Mayor Schneider. This is one of the, I don't know where this fits. First of all, having gone on both of those trips, they were both amazing. And it was a great time. It was a. a and for the public to know, all of us paid our own way, so um, it, there no city funds were used in there. But a couple of things came up in the context of doing basically international diplomacy, and one of those is the city gifts. I had the pleasure of going with um, Commissioner Kathleen Kimura and former Mayor Doris Morse to a, a sister city lecture down in Menlo Park and uh, met Silicon Valley actually has an office of protocol. Now, this was after the flag raising event here in Millbrae, and it was also where a lot of the gifts that we have to give to other countries are actually made not in the United States. So I don't know if, if staff can do this or if sister cities in their unofficial protocol hat would look into some kind of policy about where we get our gifts. So I'm, I mean, the bags for Japan, I actually spent time taking out the labels from where the bags were maintained. And then the officer of protocol, who used to work for the, the U.S. State Department, she talks about visits to, Japan, to China where the very gifts that we're giving to China are made in China, not Milbrate necessarily, but, but other places. So when we're dealing in this realm of international diplomacy, there's some pieces I think we should Get. So I, I don't know if this is your work plan or if staff wants to do it, but the officer of diplomacy of Silicon Valley offered to help us with both a um, free speech area, um, so that that will help us with any future flag events and help us know how to use the three flagpoles out there. It would also help us uh, figure out where we get our gifts and that we kind of have some step on it because it took quite a bit of time behind the scenes of how do we get gifts and what kind of gifts and, and how many people uh, on there. And I'd just like to throw that out there as something else. I think Sister City Committee, with your membership, your current membership, are well equipped to do the research and bring it back to us. I fully agree, and, and thanks go to staff for the, uh, all the work that went into providing those gifts for us on both occasions, and it was a big hit and very much appreciated. Uh, among the other protocols that we need to work on uh, are these questions that you've raised. I appreciate that, and we'll certainly hope to 
put that in a formal sense and, and commit it to writing and carry it out. And I would only add that right now there's some really good priced plane tickets to Chile. It's on my list to go to, so I'm looking forward to reestablishing. Oh, the other protocol that Kathleen mentioned to me is for city events, the dignitaries that we should automatically remember to invite. So the reorganization, we should be re inviting the diplomats from the various communities, and we need to get it on our timeline because we need to give uh, the Consul General of Japan, you know, a good amount of warning for that. So even building that into the timeline would be a great asset. You're absolutely right. Thank you. Okay. Other questions or comments? Okay, we have actually a speaker slip on this item. Uh, we have uh, Ed Misa. Is this? Yeah, one of the. Hi, Mayor, Council. Thank you for having me up here. Um, I want to uh, thank you for the opportunity to, to, to speak about my birthplace, Ramallah. Uh, we would love to have Ramallah become a sister city with Melbourne. Uh, Mayor Wayne at the time uh, sent a letter to Mayor of Ramallah, and Ramallah responded with a letter of well wishes in hoping that something like that will happen. Um, let me explain what Ramallah is and where it is. Uh, Ramallah, Ram means hill, high side, and Allah means God. So it's like the highest point to God. Um, Ramallah is pretty typical to Milbrae. It's hilly, fairly close to the coast, and uh, warm, you know, probably like Milbrae for the most part. Um, Ramallah is generally considered the most affluent and cultural, as well as the most liberal of all Palestinian cities. Um, it's home to a number of poets, artists, musicians, and several colleges and universities. Uh, Ramallah, like Melbray, has a strong Boy Scout and Girl Scout organization. As you were talking about the uh, uh, Easter in Malta, Ramallah has a wonderful. Sorry, oh, sorry. Ramallah has a wonderful Easter Palm Sunday event over there, where they, the Boy Scouts, would march through the city of Ramallah, celebrating Palm Sunday, which is pretty much the holiest day, one of the holiest days out there, and uh, just a big, grand event. Um, when we were little boys, little kids, I was a little boy. Uh, we used to have palms that. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, that's all right. So we would have the, the palms that were made by our parents and grandparents, and we would put flowers in them. As little kids, we would all get dressed up really, really nice. And we would hold the palms, you know, go to church and, and come out, and it was just a beautiful, beautiful event. Um, and again, this is the reason. Uh, I love Ramallah, and this is the reason I love Milbrae. And I think the two of them together are wonderful. Right now we have probably uh, 50 families living in, in Milbrae from Ramallah. So it's quite a few. Um, I've been living here since 75. I went to Taylor and Mills. My kids went to Spring Valley Taylor and Mills. Uh, so any questions? or? Any questions from the council? No. Councilman Lee? Uh, thank you, Mr. Musa, for uh, your presentation. Yes, I, uh, as when I was mayor uh, last year, uh, towards the end of my uh, term, um, I, uh, Mr. Musa, Musa explained to me the, uh, the rich heritage that exists in Millbrain around the Bay Area um, of Ramolites. Um, and that's Ramolites, not Ramolins. <laughs> um, and so I wrote a letter uh, uh, expressing uh, uh, an interest in some sort of relationship with uh, Ramola. Um, and they responded quickly, um, said they were interested in forming a friendship city or sister city of some, some sort, um, which is incredibly, um, uh, I think it was, it was an incredible honor for Milbrae. So um, 
I hope that we do pursue this in some way. And uh, I explained to Mr. Musa that um, for any sister city or friendship city relationship to be successful, it has to have a champion and a sponsor. Um, it can't be the city can't uh, can't can't uh, doesn't have the resources or the um, the authority to um, to sponsor such an event. So he he and um, the many Ramalites in Millbrae have enthusiastically embraced that idea. Yeah. Okay. Well, wonderful. Yeah, thank you for the presentation. We can't really, you know, it's not really a back and forth type of thank you uh, of thing. But but I would recommend um, maybe attending the next Sister Cities Commission and, and speaking and introducing yourself to them and um, see if the process can begin. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So, Mr. Mayor, just as an update, because we've been working with Mr. Musa in the okay. letter, and I need to brief you on it, but we do have this scheduled uh, for staff presentation on Monday, February 24th at the Sister Cities Commission for introduction and, and review. So we'll be on the agenda for uh, discussion. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yes. Uh, Vice Mayor Schneider. Excellent. I look forward to seeing that. Um, the other thing I learned at that sister city conference was some cities and their sister city commissions do fundraise. And it's not to send elected officials to that country necessarily. It's to when they visit here that you've got money to take dignitaries to various events and things like that. So I, I think we restructured before I came on board council how our various committees and commissions could or couldn't fundraise. But just throwing that out there as an idea that other, sister, other cities allow their sister cities to fundraise. Ramallah, we have... Uh I can still keep sure. going. Uh, we have a, a, an organization. It's called the Ramallah Club uh, for International in San Francisco. Uh, we have a, a convention, a.k.a. reunion. Um, we would have 1,500 people come to this reunion. We've had it here in Burlingame a couple of times, in San Francisco a few times, and all around the country. Every single year we have one. Uh, we've had it back in Ramallah twice, very, very successful, as you would imagine. So it's, uh, we have quite a few people that are definitely willing to, to, to have it that way. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Okay. Um, do we have a, oh, yes, uh, Chair Gottschalk. Uh, in response to Vice Mayor Schneider, uh, prior to the arrival of Mr. Williams, we were instructed by the city manager that we were no longer allowed to do any fundraising. We have some money in the bank. We have plenty of needs that we believe we have to foresee, to, to properly use that money. We would love to have the opportunity to get back in active uh, fundraising mode. And I just want to clarify that. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's, there was the, the commission used to fundraise and then was advised that they're not no longer allowed to fundraise. So, um, I, I, again, I think they would appreciate that opportunity, but it's a legal question, I think, at this point. Somehow the city of Menlo Park has worked it out. We can look into that. But. Yeah, I think there's reasons because um, they probably have a, a nonprofit to go through because you can't intermingle um, private. Yeah, it's no, it's no longer under the city's um, uh, bank. It, it shows up on the audit, and then we get dinged for it. Okay. Do we have a motion uh, to approve? We have a motion uh, from Vice Mayor Schneider and a second from Councilman Lee. Uh, your votes, please. Item number 11 passed with a vote of four to zero with council member Oliva excused. Okay, uh, next on the agenda is item 12, which is the adoption of the fiscal year 2019-2020 senior advisory committee work plan. And we have our chair, uh, Marlene McBride and uh, Rochelle Mullen as well. Marlene. Okay, I will. Um, so. Um, just use the arrows mm -hmm. to go forward. This is going back. I need to just left and right. Okay. Um, it might be easier to be actually using the okay. mic. It is yes. It's with great pleasure that we come as a senior advisory committee. My name is Marlene McBride, but be first I want to honor our council and our mayor and our council and also our staff. Um, my name is Marlene McBride. Uh, 
And my good friend is? I'm Rochelle Mullen. And we'll go through the um, Senior Advisory Committee. And I want to stress to you that this report is one that um, is from June 2018 to June 2019. And the people that are on our committee are myself, Mary Ellen Pellegrini, Mimi Lee, Rochelle Mullen, Mimi Lynn, Ann Jones, and Patrick Cheng. And we are funded again, as I mentioned, from June 18, 2018 to 2019. And I want to go through this because uh, so many times we miss this, so we'll go through each one. We're, we funded the expansion of the self-help for the elderly lunch program and conducted language lessons for them. We participated, participated in a joint meeting with the Youth Advisory Committee. We provided program recommendations and support to the recreational staff resulting a senior lounge program and the senior scam presentation endorsement. We participated in the Millbury Recreational Center Rebuilding Advisory Committee meetings and provided input from the senior residents. We did have a lot of input from the seniors at this point. We participated in city events and received information from various senior organizations. And the next thing we have is our 2019-2020 work plan. Our task one, and I, I do want to go through these because some of these will be updated. Task one, advisory body to the city council as an ongoing activity, serve as a recommended body for matters as defined in the resolution 1637. And 1637 gives us a guidelines as to what the senior advisory committee should be doing. And it's excellently pl planned out so we know what to do. Task two, programs and fees. As an ongoing activity, review and make recommendations to the Parks and Recreational Commission for, re for review by the City Council for Parks and Recreation Operations, programming and fees for the services. And we, by the way, have uh, many programs that are on our senior line, and I'll show that to you in a moment. Task three, Build relationships with se local senior organizations. Connect with local senior organizations to build relationships and increase communication and outreach within the senior community. Task four, we have a lot of things going. Senior programming support. We provide assistance and support to current senior programs and events. And it's important at this point that we be aware of our senior line. The senior line, as each one of you has one, in the, is always available at our recreational center. And it has all of the activities that we participate in. And there's a tax, for, I mean, if you're interested in having your taxes gone over, you can look into the senior line. One of our members, Ann Jones, found out that there was an interest in having a detailed calendar for each month oh for each month so we need to be aware of this and uh, so many people look at it daily and they say this is what I can do on that day so that's something that we're doing continuing and and task five senior resources and information seek out senior resources collect information and share with the senior community and what we are doing is we have a uh, individual area for the seniors. It's a bulletin for all the senior activities at the rec center. And also we have a rack with all of the resources that are available. Now, the best part is to hear what we are doing still or what we've done with Rochelle. Thank you, Marlene. Uh, we have, I'm just giving you some specific uh, items uh, that um, we would like to provide the following examples of how our committee continues to achieve our stated test. Just note that this is just a sampling. Uh, in the area of presentations at our monthly meetings are, on the following, we had a, a 
Sorry, can you hold the microphone closer? Excuse me. We had a, a representative from Group 4 Architecture on an update on the Community Center project. We also had a presentation from HIP Housing, which was regarding home sharing, which is important for a lot of seniors who may be living alone and would like to have some, earn some extra money and provide housing for other individuals. We also had a presentation uh, from Colette Vacations regarding senior trip opportunities. And we also had a per, um, presentation by Jean Perry providing us surveys of adult and aging populations. Um, the deadline that for submission of these surveys was uh, December the 31st of 2019, but uh, because of the um, appeal, um, Milbray extended the submission to uh, have the submissions of the surveys from to January the 21st. Um, in one of our tasks, it had to do with participating in uh, the city um, information. So our committee members are particip participating members to provide input on senior matters and to keep our committee in touch with ongoing city concerns. In that area, um, we had a representative of our commission as a part of the community center building project. And we all, Marlene usually goes to the mayor's civic coordinating council providing information on what's going on with our senior area and also finding out what other areas in the city um, that might impact our concerns. And also in uh, area of providing support to seniors, um, in the area of the senior birthday lunches, uh, we uh, offered a suggestion to honor our veterans at the November lunch, and that seemed to go over well. And we also provided volunteer assistance at the January health fair. Um, we also have uh, off-site meetings uh, with Cadence Senior Living and Magnolia Senior Living, this way offering um, uh, updates on what might be available to seniors who need that sort of services. Thank you. And they have spoiled us. We've had breakfast, lunches, and dinners. And it's nice to be a senior, and thank you for listening to us. Thank you very much, and um, I know Marlene, you've done uh, a lot of, you've helped quite a bit with the um, recreation center planning, and hope as we go through the next phase of the project, which hopefully will be very quickly, we keep you uh, engaged in that and and uh, make sure that we have um, great input from our, our senior community. Um, any questions or comments? Yes, Vice Mayor Schneider. And Chief Kunkel, this might be also for you. Um, I had the pleasure of filling in for Councilwoman Oliva at the Senior uh, Senior Commission meeting last week, and it's always a pleasure to be with you. Um, for any of you who have older family members, they have both the monthly luncheon, well, the monthly luncheon is really great, and my folks started going, my dad made new friends, and for all of us who have elderly parents, um, you have to constantly be rebuilding your friendships. So it's it was very important, and, and Mom and I are very thankful. Um, I went to the last luncheon uh, last week or the week before, and they had more people coming, so that was exciting. It was a growing group on there. So please, uh, look, reach out to that, and it's at the Magnolia. It's really quite lovely, and they have a great bingo game, set of bingo games. My question for you, Chief, is two years ago, I went out with uh, Peninsula Volunteers who managed the Meals on Wheels program, and the Meals on Wheels program had just expanded into Millbrae before that we were handled by some other government entity and with my emergency services hat and the fact that we are trying to find people who are homebound and it's not only seniors it can be people with disabilities but trying to identify them for our evacuation plans how can we make sure that all the various parts of Millbrae are working with each other and I usually I, I didn't get an invitation from Meals and Wheels. Maybe I didn't serve correctly two years ago, but I hopefully will go out with them. At the time, all of the volunteers from Millbrae's Meals on Wheels came from Redwood City. So if you've got some free time, I'm sure Meals on Wheels, who uh, take uh, <coughs> special... Uh, 
the calories are exactly intended for uh, seniors for lunch and dinner, and they bring these pre-made meals to your home. They also conduct a wellness check at the time. Um, they can provide sometimes the only human contact that some of our homebound people are getting. But how can we become more involved in that and help us with evac plans? Uh, as far as our evac plan, that's a difficult one. I know pg e is working on that. What we run into repeatedly is it's hard to maintain the database, determine who maintains it, and there's significant privacy issues. Issues. So I like that idea as well. Uh, we approached that when I was the director of OES, uh, but it's a very difficult, complicated matter to solve, and I think we're still working on it, but we have not slain the dragon yet. Uh, but the Office of Emergency Services, I know, is working on it. And as far as helping uh, Meals on Wheels, we'd be more than happy to help. Oh, no, no that, that wasn't for you. It, okay, good. How do we get all the The city has so many moving pieces. How can we keep them all well, moving I, together? I, I think this might be, a, this, this could be a good, if I may, Mayor, good discussion for the upcoming. Well, it, it is if the senior commission looks into, um, you know. And, be, be aware of the survey that's going out. That survey is asking people what their needs are. And if people fill out that survey, that I think it's Christina on that form, and you can let her know what you're okay. doing. And that's one reason. And also, as far as the luncheons, the luncheons that we have on the second Wednesday of the month are at the Magnolia. But we also have the self-help for the elderly, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Very good. And those are at 1030. Thank you. And Chief, we're going to sign you up for uh, helping with the Meals on Wheels uh, next week. <laughs> Not the, you don't have enough to do. <laughs> well, I, I actually think they invite all elected officials to go uh, do a day of learning how it's done. You go down and see where the meals are prepped, and then you come. I delivered That's with the idea. executive Good director, experience. and it was a real um, learning experience. It was very valuable. Okay, wonderful. And it happens in March. Okay, um, do we have a motion to approve? Okay, we have a motion from Councilman Lee and a second from Councilwoman Pepin. Uh, your votes, please. Item number 12 passed with a vote of four to zero with Councilmember Oliva excused. All right, um, next on the agenda, we will go back to existing business. Uh, item number eight, recommendations of artwork submitted by Millbrae High Schools for utility box painting. And we have uh, Debbie Van Wart, the chair of the, uh, no, not the chair, from the Cultural Arts Committee. Okay. And Pam Foss, the chair of the okay. um, Cultural Arts Committee. And Barbara Whiteley, and Pam is unable <laughs> to make it, so here I am taking her place. I am a member of the commission with Debbie, and there are four of us, and uh, we have a project that we've been working on with the utility box, uh, box uh, bringing art to Millbrae. We want to beautify the city. So I just wanted to go over briefly what we've been doing, and um, I'll make it quick. <laughs> so the next slide. So a little background, a little timeline, and also the site locations and design recommendations. Speak closer to the microphone. Okay. Next one. Okay, so the background is in January of 2017, we reconvened and um, came, started coming up with different projects for our committee. We... Um, the Leos helped us. They surveyed. We, we decided on uh, beautifying the utility boxes. So the Leos surveyed and cataloged all the utility boxes in Millbury. We also did a pilot program for the painting of the utility boxes. Then the committee members reached out to the art teachers of the Millbury schools to determine if there was any interest in students submitting their artwork to us. The deadline for the proposals was on uh, February 20th last year. Two utility boxes have been completed, and uh, we have three more that need to be painted in 2020. So why are we doing it? I mean, basically for community art, bringing the community together, getting the community engaged, and for beautifying the city. So in uh, Mills High School, where the next box that we're going to be doing is um, located 
uh, at the south end of the farmer's market parking lot. And the student who won is Catherine Louis. And this is her design. And I apologize for putting it together, but she brought it to us on paper. So we had to kind of, do you want to turn it around? Let me bring it. <coughs> And I also have a little printout of her, her reason for the design. And the top is kind of <laughs> inside. Okay, and then the second student, and her name is Isabel Solano, and the second student, how do you do this? <laughs> well, that's the end of that. <laughs> I need your help with this. Oh, I need to go back to the second one. Second one. Yeah. The next one was by a Cappuccino student, and the box is located on the sidewalk near Ludman uh, uh, Lane and El Camino Real. And um, her um, box is being passed around. So, so the deadline was... Um, this, this, for this, the deadline was uh, uh, February 20th of last year, and then the recommendation for the first two boxes for approval was, was on uh, March 12th, and so the first round of utility boxes have been completed. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Uh, and so th then uh, in October, we had a second round of utility boxes, and that and the second round was brought to the city for approval, is, bringing, is here for approval for the city today. Oh, okay. <laughs> and then we're going to have... Um, we we'll probably will have the utility boxes will be um, completed the second round in the spring, and then we'll, we have one more uh, box to be done, which is going to be uh, uh, submitted. The artwork is going to be submitted by the seniors, and we haven't had a date for that yet, but that is the last box. Yeah, it'll be sometime in the spring. So what are the next steps? We really would like to get the approval of the city council for the design choices. Okay, uh, thank you, Councilman Lee. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the Art Commissions uh, for the work you've done. It's, it's I'm very, very impressed and very, very, very grateful because we're really art starved here in, in Millbrae as far as I'm concerned. Um, I think art, provides should be um, provocative it should be making people think um, it should engage people um, and it should be unique and hopefully hopefully it'll, it'll reflect the diversity of our city as well um, so i'm looking for forward to your creativity um, and as, again i'm hoping that uh, other than uh, our schools uh, other citizens will be allowed to do some artwork um, along Millbrae, and I, I'm not so sure why this council needs to approve it because uh, I'm, you know, I, obviously there's an art commission who has a lot more art, art, artist eyes than I have. So, <laughs> but I, I do, I do appreciate uh, uh, the work you've done so far, and uh, it's it's brought uh, more meaningfulness to me as a citizen of Millbrae. So uh, you're doing, you're great, obviously, to me, you're doing great work. Um, so I, I, I don't, I, 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 as long as staff and, to me, as long as staff and the Art Commission are good with their selection, um, I'm happy that you are showing the art to us, but I don't think you need our approval. Um. Uh, Councilman Pavin. Uh, sorry, Councilmember Lee. Uh, yeah, we, we've been through this. We do have a public art um, policy it, it does need to come before the council uh, for various reasons these are beautiful thank you for your time and effort I love them and looking forward to seeing them in public and all the work you're doing it's wonderful uh, because the ordinance is that way because sometimes people may not agree in general and then it would fall on the council to uh, Accept responsibility for all that. But thank you so much and look forward to many more projects like this. So I would like to vote approval. 
Uh, Vice Mayor Schneider? Um, again, I think it's amazing, and I know how hard our commissioners, committee members have been working on that. So thank you, and thank you to the young artists. There were other submissions. They were all lovely, but there was only one box. The, this is the, well, there's one more. Once the senior position goes through, then the pilot project will end, and they'll, the committee will have an idea of what it costs, how much effort, and things like that for it to roll out. So Councilman Lee, where you were asking about other artist ability, that would be the next phase. And I can tell you that the city, and because PG&E had a First Amendment concern, they took away the ability to paint any uh, PG&E boxes. So you go to other cities, they got in before PG&E changed their minds. Um, basically, and I, we offered PG&E, you could choose the art themselves, you know, if they were so worried about something being inappropriate, but we haven't gotten them to budge yet. But we'll keep working on that. Um, but that will be coming. But the boxes at the end of Millbury Avenue, right where the airport put up their new hotel sign on Millbury property, um, that sign could be moved and there's some lovely utility boxes that would be uh, maybe a good first stab at a professional artist at that location. Uh, I'm thinking, well, I think you already had an idea for uh, and pushing the idea of having wall murals around the city. Yes. Uh, I know they do that in Chinatown and it's really brought brought some uh, it brought some a lot of visibility to Chinatown. And and that's actually on their work plan that we approved in November or December. We approved that. But it's it's on their list. The They're for that, list. Right? Yep. We've got a few projects on our list. Those are mm -hmm. mostly yeah. on private property. So, yeah. uh, so. But there's a work, we talked about that at the last cultural arts meeting, that one way San Bruno may have handled that is that they actually have the muralist put it on a canvas, and then the canvas is attached to the wall. Oh, so if you go down San Mateo Avenue in San Bruno, they've got a pocket park in the middle of, this, of the block there, and it's got three different pieces of art on the wall. So that's one way of getting around the use of public monies on a private wall. So there's some, again, some, some issues to still work out, but you guys are doing great. Okay. All right. Thank you very much for your support. So All right. We do need so we have a motion from Councilwoman Pappen and a second from Councilman Lee. Uh, your votes, please. And just in closing, when the artists start, you'll let us know like the last time so we can come and see. Part of bringing public art back to a council meeting is so the public can see what's going on and hopefully um, start smiling a little bit. Item number eight passed with a vote of four to zero with council member Oliva excused. Okay, uh, next on the agenda is item number nine. Uh, reaffirming the citywide position opposing Senate Bill 50 and authorizing submission of the mayor's opposition letter. And as you remember, we had a discussion about this in the spring of 2019, and uh, the, the bill died at that time, but, but never really died. It has come back to life, and um, there were some amendments that were made uh, January 6th of 2020 that attempted to ease some of the city concerns, but um, in crafting these amendments, we feel that there are uh, a number of, of questions that have been raised and have not been answered. Um, and uh, the bill, I think, has a, a deadline of this Friday, and it, it may be voted on as soon as tomorrow, from, from what I've heard. Um, City Manager, do you have any uh, additional staff report? or? Uh, no, I mean, I think that this is, you know, the opposition to SB 50 is detailed in the attached letter. Uh, we also attach the League of California Cities uh, letter of opposition. Um, if approved this evening, we will uh, submit it through the League of Cities portal uh, first thing and email it to uh, um, all of the state legislatures uh, via email. Um, if there's any technical questions, I mean, it's just the same thing continues, continues to, you know, you usurp due process, um, takes away the transparency of the development process by eliminating local land use and development regulations, public hearings and public input for land development projects. It, it basically takes uh, <laughs> the state of California and turns minimum zoning into four units, um, you know, per uh, parcel. So. Um, Kind of same thing that we had discussed, um, and if there are any technical questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Uh, yes, Councilman Pappen. Um, I'd like to thank the mayor and staff for preparing this letter, and um, I, I do think that the letter points out a very significant um, issues 
that currently exist with this legislation and we have previously tried to work with the author to seek amendments and I know the um, Council of Cities and a lot of people have they're just not um, accepting the amendments and one of the primary um, issues in the legislation is that it's inequitable it does not treat all counties or jurisdictions the same and if they are truly committed to housing everybody should be treated equally um, and in addition to that Millbrae in its unique way has very significant uh, transit issues that we have tried to enhance throughout in any developments that we do but it actually deters people from taking transit in some jurisdictions. So I think I really compliment the mayor for putting this together in such detail and um, really pointing out the issues that we have that we would have hoped would have been cured but have not. And we want to note too, Milbrae's Pat has approved 844 housing units. We are doing a lot in that realm and will continue to do so within the plans that we have established here. So this will be a part of the record for people to see. And I would recommend we carefully make sure that the uh, chairman of the housing committees get this. Uh, the governor gets it too and a few others that our message is clearly being presented here because we're not trying to avoid our obligations but we are trying to be very respectful and work with our legislators this just was not possible so thank you again mr mayor i appreciate your doing this move approval yeah thank you councilman yeah the the, the um, amendments for those not familiar that were made to the bill attempted to create what's called a local accountability plan which uh, would allow cities to come up with their own plan of how they would comply and if they do that and if the plan is approved um, by a, a a state agency, um, the overriding um, provisions of the bill would no longer apply. Uh, unfortunately, the, the legislation did not make any clear standards for what um, you know what would be acceptable in a local accountability plan, and um, you know it, it, it takes the power out of even out of the legislature and puts it in the. Um, Housing and Community Development uh, Department at the state level, and unfortunately, we you know we cannot uh, personally. I can't uh, accept that at this time. Um, that uh, you know, it's saying that we have to come up with a plan without any any clear standards or, or guidelines as to what would be acceptable. Okay, we do have a speaker slip on the. Uh, oh, sorry, uh, Vice Mayor Schneider. Um, and I thank you for the letter. I know I had been trying to keep an open mind on SB 50, but um, my frustration over transportation agencies' control over what's happening with TOD 1 and Site 1 really frustrates me. And I didn't see anything in any of the documentation that talks. Let me rephrase. It puts all the pressure on cities and ignores that transportation agencies can be extremely destructive to existing housing and any new housing. And I think if um, Senator Weiner is really positive about trying to buy to build housing, he should get the transportation agencies on the hook too, because what they're doing to Millbrae is unforgivable. I don't care if it's in old language or new language. They are stopping housing and they're costing our city time for that, and it's just not acceptable on that. So, you know, uh, I spoke to uh, Senator Weiner back in December, specifically on our TOD1 project, and said, come on down, come learn what's going on here. And it's like going in one ear and out the other. So it's very frustrating. It's been a frustrating process. Yeah, one other um, comment is that the, the bill has no, um, really no funding mechanisms for infrastructure and for um, you know, services that, that cities would have to provide. So yeah, I think we would be happy to accommodate increased housing. We're looking to do that through the, um, the RENA process um, and our updating our housing element. But um, unfortunately, having such you know, broad mandates without any type of infrastructure or transportation funding um, to accommodate a growing population um, is, is not acceptable. Uh, uh, Councilman Lee, do you have a Yeah, comment? again, I thank uh, th the mayor and staff for putting this letter together, um, and particularly the leadership of the mayor for uh, putting getting this letter out. Um, I did put out a similar letter 
And uh, I, I would like to see, actually, if we can, before we send it out, more discussion about um, affordable housing, I strongly saying that it's lacking, and the whole idea of building housing is to provide housing. And if we're not building affordable housing, we're not providing housing. Yeah. Uh, that, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah. I think I think we're on a time. I know we're at times, but I think it's important enough yeah. to add that, um, and also uh, maybe emphasize the fact that without do without uh, uh, without um, consider uh, good consideration of what the uh, uh, if every city should be treated uh, at um, with equality um, because all the cities are different, as as Councilman Pappin said, and the, the need. Building housing can actually um, bankrupt a city uh, if it's not done correctly. Like they're not required. If if if, if the developers aren't building uh, retail or a way to pay for the amenities that is required. For instance, this city is going to have to come up with 1.5 million dollars to accommodate all the salaries that we on all the firemen and policemen we have to hire uh, because we have to have another fire truck and we have to have another shift. You know that could bankrupt a city who doesn't have the uh, the, the means. So somewhere along the way, it has to be said that due consideration of of how is, how is, uh, there should be some sort of analysis done also on and and making developers uh, answer those questions as well. I mean, and, and but we shouldn't say that. We also want to emphasize we want to build when they build the houses, they should build the houses with some sort of analysis saying what the economic impacts are going to be. Yeah, good points. And good point about the uh, uh, affordability component as well, because, you know, it's really sort of a, a trickle down economics type of uh, argument that, you know, if you build all these housing units at, you know, 3000 3500 um, a month for, for a studio, that it'll make existing housing cheaper. And it's, you know, I, I, I I have a hard time believing those arguments. I think if if anything, it has a very minimal impact on uh, on affordability. Uh, so I was just at dinner the other day. I met this Apple guy who worked at Apple. And he's from Australia, and I asked him, "So how long are you gonna be working for Apple?" Well, as long as they keep making money, he's getting half a million dollars a year. How can you possibly afford a house to get a house and compete with a guy getting half a million dollars a year? So I, I, mean, I think I think we have to continue to, um, you know, we would like to increase housing supply and make sure that we include affordable units in any development that's improved in Millbrae. I think we need a citywide inclusionary housing ordinance, which I was surprised to recently learn we do not have. Um, so, you know, something to think about for the goal setting next week. Uh, can we share those but, with CAG? And sure, we can do that, um, yeah. Yeah, if, if we could share this with CCAG. Uh, and one other group. Oh, if, yeah, if you League could send cities. it to MTC as well. A bag. A bag and MTC as well. Thank you. Uh, Vice Mayor Schneider. Well, I, yeah, I'm not sure if it goes into goal setting, but if we, if we're going to, if Millbrae is going to become a little proactive, maybe it's time that we start sharing where we are unique. We, when you talk about a fourplex coming into a single family neighborhood with all the cars that we get with Uber and Lyft drivers overnighting in our streets, we are, not every city has Uber and Lyft drivers. It's because of our proximity to SFO that we have conditions that other cities don't have. And and I am generally all for affordable housing and housing improvements, but I think we should really be looking at ghost housing, too. We are a city that has could have significant number of ghost housing. Those are houses people buy and then leave them empty. And the province of British Columbia has passed a law that is trying to disencourage people buying houses, parking money from some other country and leaving them vacant. What they're calling it, because I have lots of family in Canada, they call it the um, College Student Housing Act, because a lot of these absentee owners are putting a college student in there. Well, that's okay. College students need housing. So if that works, it works. But I think we should, ha having a vacant house in your neighborhood doesn't help your neighborhood. So there's multiple reasons for looking at ghost houses. Housing too. Yeah, and building a you know a fourplex uh, on a single family lot, you know, ten miles from the nearest transit station doesn't help to encourage transit ridership. Exactly. So. Okay. Uh, we do have a, com a speaker slip on this item. Uh, Stephen Green. Uh, 
Good evening, members of the City Council. Uh, first, I'd like to address some concerns I have about the letter of opposition as written. Uh, first of all, the section detailing your opposition to the legalization of fourplexes casts as a nightmare scenario single-family homes being converted to house four families. Not because you have concerns about the families living there, but because you have concerns about parking. This is in keeping with a city that views storage for cars as more important than homes for families, which I hope does not describe us. Your worry about making the dream of home ownership unattainable is couched in the perception that a detached single family home is the only type of home that anyone would ever want. Second, the section about fiscal impacts seems like a strange one to make in the face of the ludicrous water bills in the city that are right now levied on a per household basis to offset the cost of infrastructure repair. I will point out the obvious that these costs would be lower if the city had more households. Similarly, new residents pay new taxes, sales taxes most importantly, on top of increased property taxes triggered by reassessments due to redevelopment. It is strange then that you contrasted residential development with revenue generating development. I don't expect to be able to change your minds or how you are about to vote, but assuming that SB 50 does not pass, I'm expecting big things from the forthcoming general plan based on the language I'm seeing in the, list in the letter of opposition. If Milbray thinks they can do better, they have yet to prove it. Look no further than the empty lot that has seen no development despite 15 years it has spent immediately next door to our large intermodal station. Look no further than the city's bizarre parking requirements despite the proximity of that same station. Uses that require no parking in the downtown improvement area confusingly require exorbitant amounts a block away from BART. Or look at the height limits and parking requirements that exist in spite of already built and eminently functional examples. My existing six unit building, where it built today for example, would require 33% more parking, most likely a geometric impossibility on its lot. This is all to say nothing of the outright ban on multifamily housing the city is still trying to preserve on over 70% of its land, in the midst of the most severe housing shortage this country has likely ever seen. This type of zoning is not what got us our lovely downtown. Millbury has gone backwards rather than forwards in the density and types of construction it allows. As you vote to condemn SB 50, I hope you do so with the renewed resolve to put your money where your mouths are and create an intelligent and tailored plan that allows Millbury to grow and thrive. The pressure on all of us is building, and the longer we delay, the more certain and even more drastic response from Sacramento becomes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Green. I think you made a lot of good points, and we will look to address that through our general plan update. Uh, Vice Mayor Schneider? Um, Mr. Green, I, I appreciate your points. However, and I did sit down with a number of, of young housing advocates a week ago about this. Um, the reality is, is we approved 444 to 488 housing units and high-speed rail and Caltrain put a stop to it. That's not our power. I would love to see the housing advocates get out there and talk to the transportation agencies. This land that Caltrain is fighting over isn't big enough for them to build housing. And in fact, their business plan says that the two places they're going to build housing are in uh, Mountain View and I can't remember the other train station, but it was not ours. So instead, they've held, they've delayed a process by seven months. And if you talk to the developer who wants to build those projects that we approved, that we approved 10-story buildings, that is unlike any city other than South San Francisco in this county. So I, 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 um, I hear what you're saying. I understand your frustration, but we have done our part and we'll continue to do our part on El Camino Real. You can talk, I took the same housing advocates and said, look, we we have the widest width of El Camino. You want to work on housing in Millbrae? Work on Caltran on narrowing El Camino Real so that we can turn some unproductive asphalt into something that can bring us both economic development and housing. But do not knock us for an ordinance that would say that you can put... And then let's talk about fourplexes in single-family neighborhoods. We're already approving ADUs designed specifically for each neighborhood. So already right there we're going into a higher density. And in fact, we have in most neighborhoods neighborhoods, duplexes already in existence. So um, maybe Milbury needs to do a better job of making sure everybody knows just what we've already got before anybody points fingers at us for not doing things. Um, yes, uh, Councilman Pepin. Yeah, and to clear the record here, the only height limits we have in Milbury relate to the airport, not Milbury. We are building 10 stories high 
So, and it is a progression in the general plan as to other areas of the city here. Your allegations as to 15 years, 15 years ago, nobody wanted to build there. This development, both one and two, have um, astronomically accelerated beyond anybody else's developments at an intermodal center, probably too quickly as we are discovering some of the issues that are coming forward here. But those projects progressed, I think it's only been five years um, as to when they were proposed. So again, we appreciate the passion a lot of people have here, but we need to get the facts straight that we are proceeding along the lines, trying to find a balance that will, as the mayor's letter points out, uh, sustain Millbrae and also help Millbrae grow. So we are hopeful that these 844 units will come to reality and we have other ones along, in the pipeline right now along El Camino. So we look forward to all those happening. But we would like to keep the facts straight. Thank you. And I think we also have capacity concerns with our water and our sewer infrastructure. It's simply not, uh, we simply don't have the capacity to, for an 80,000 population city or whatever Millbrae could be under SB 50. Obviously, it wouldn't happen all at once. Um, but we do have you know, limitations from Bosco for water supply. And we do have our own treatment plant, which uh, would require you know, massive upgrades if our city were to be you know, 40, 50, 60,000 thousand people in the next 20 years or whatever it would be. Uh, Councilman Lee? Yeah, and, um, and, and I appreciate your comment about the water rates. It is high, and uh, adding more people, yeah, we'll lower, maybe, maybe we're not going to lower the price of the water as much. Um, it will a little bit, but I'm more concerned with um, the, existing, the existing residents who are living on fixed income um, and raising taxes on them and keeping raising taxes on certain on uh, residents will drive those people out. I know that was part of your goal, one of your ideas was to drive out uh, existing residents so that you can have to raise the property tax but that's not acceptable for people who've lived here and, and called this their home. So that's not that's not a solution. So the solution is to make make the dollars work efficiently. And you just building housing, it's not it's not going to solve the problem. You you solve one problem, you create another. You create a huge deficit for all the people here who cannot be can only be taxed so much, and they can't afford it anymore. And you think that's okay, but you might be making half a million dollars, I mean, half a, half a million dollars a year, but not everybody else is making half a million dollars a year. So you can only tax the residents so much. You have to have a, a balanced approach in the city. And the citizens shouldn't be, have, to, have to be taxed over and over again, having to pay high water rates, have to pay uh, more parcel tax, have to pay more bond measures. We need to make the city work for us. We need to make the, uh, a commercial base that works for us. And who doesn't want to have a place to go shop anyway or go eat? So that's all part of the fabric of this of all cities. You have to have some. You have to have a balance. And we're not saying not build housing. We said build housing, but also build housing with the amenities. You don't want to just have just housing here, and where you're gonna you're gonna just have people come here, and then they're gonna leave. And we already have an 80% leakage rate, which means that most people don't shop in the city of Millbury; they shop elsewhere. All right, thank you, Councilman Lee. Okay, I think we've discussed this enough. Uh, we have a motion from Councilman Pappen and a second from Vice Mayor Schneider. Uh, your votes, please. Item number nine passed with a vote of four to zero with council member Oliva excused. All right, thank you. Uh, next on the agenda is item number 10, an informational update on the Millbury Recreation Center restoration project. Uh, good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, and members of the City Council. I'm Jane Kauf uh, with the Public Works Department. Jane, if, can, I, can I real quick interrupt here? So um, kind of the, the reorganization of the city's gotten ahead of me a little bit and working with staff, but I would like to introduce Jane. She is, uh, is now our acting Public Works Director. Um, so if you don't know Jane or you've seen her, please um, welcome her as acting Public Works Director under the tutelage of, of Key Lim, who will be taking over uh, the interim roles for community development directors. Brad Meisner has left. I will provide a memo to the city council of what we're doing and how we're doing it. But Jane is very, very capable since I've been on board and I'm just very happy um, to provide her with the opportunity to step up in the leadership role here at the city. So Jane, welcome um, as our interim public works director. 
Thank you, Tom. Thank you, everybody. Uh, so tonight I'm here to give a monthly update for the Millbury Recreation Center project. So last time we came to council was um, November 14th, and the council awarded a professional service agreement to Swinerton Management and Consulting Firm for project management and construction management. So since then, staff has been working with Swinerton as well as the city's attorney's office uh, to transition from the design build process to, pardon me, design bid build process to the design bid process. Um, along the way, we are working on the request for qualifications, which uh, we hope to shortlist three design builders, uh, and then request for proposal, which is the contract document, which will be issued to the three shortlisted um, design builder. And we have been confirming project scope and budget. This is where we looked at cost savings opportunities, and as well as the project labor agreement. And this is all to help maintain the $30 million total budget. So schedule and next step. Um, next step will be the pre-qualification process. Uh, we are scheduled to issue the RFQ next week, and the process will take about four weeks, and we hope to have the shortlist of firms uh, selected by March. And then the next step is the proposal stage. Uh, we would like to issue the request for proposal in April, and that will be a 12 roughly 12 weeks process and have a design builder selected by June. With that, we will come back to council in July and award the contract to the design build entity. Uh, with that, we can kick off construction documents and construction, which will last 18 months and will commence uh, December 2021 with soft opening and moving in by March 2022. And then uh, staff would like to give a monthly update at the second meeting of each month as consent item. And uh, we're happy to pull that off and do a new business or existing business item for discussion on the major updates. Any questions? Yes, uh, Vice Mayor Schneider. Okay, my philosophy on consent calendar is I think the public is really desperate in getting more information about the rec center. When we put things on consent calendar, I know we can pull it off. I know the public can pull it off, but I think it would be better to have it as a standing item in existing business. I think it's well worth it, and it's, it's to our advantage to keep everybody well informed, just like the TODs. If, if that's council's preference, we can certainly do that um, on, on slow months, or you, you you can certainly take the item and place it on consent. So if it's at the concurrence of the council, we'll keep it on the existing business calendar. We, we have no problem with that as staff. We're just trying to be efficient and not repetitive. I think the balance is efficiency and transparency, yeah. and also having the public trust us. So if we think that one of the reasons the measure failed when we went to the bond was they didn't trust us, we're still trying to, we're, we've done major steps in the last year and a half in that. But so there is a request once a month to have it on? Um, once a month, because I was confused. I thought we'd already gotten the short, we got the RFQ back. So I'm confused myself and I have better access than the public does. So we're just going out to get the RFQ, to get the list, to get the three. So I'm already confused. So, I'm not really confused. Well, no, so, so the RFQ, no, we, we're, we're on schedule. So the RFQ, we're reviewing and it will be released per the schedule. So that schedule is held. Our, our purpose is, is exactly what you said. Have a monthly update on the council calendar that we can discuss and, and communicate what's happening uh, on a monthly basis, the status of the project. Um, we, we'd be happy to keep that on existing business, um, no problem. Mr. Murphy. Yes, uh, Councilwoman Pappen. Thank you. Um, well, I think we all agree transparency is very important. Might I suggest, too, that our recreation bulletin has some sort of a timeline in there that people could follow, just a corner section in case people are not, people have more interesting things to watch on TV Tuesday nights and may not be watching us. Um, we, and just keeping our website up to date would be very helpful along those lines. And, and I think too, maybe even um, sharing our information uh, with the school district 
because they have a population that's very interested in, in this as well. So I, I think that would be great in keeping everybody informed. Thank you. Thank you for the suggestions. Yes, Vice Mayor Schneider. Again, I don't sit on this council subcommittee, so I have less information. Um, I, I'm really happy that we're getting closer and um, that maybe we'll be breaking ground this summer, but I am concerned that we haven't identified um, the FF and E costs that the community or various community groups might be able to help support, but they're going to need some long range planning. So, for example, if the Lions were, and I'm not committing the Millbury Lions, but I am a Millbury Lion, and the first thing the Lions said to me after the fire was, please build a cooking, a good kitchen, it was the very first thing how many Lions came to me, but that's very expensive. And let's say it's 50000 or more, they don't raise that much money, we don't raise that much money in a year. So if that expectation is sitting out there, it's going to take community groups a while to get there. If we want all of the various teenage youth, the tweens and the teens, to fund the FF&E for the teen room, they need to have an, a target to start saving money for. As an advisor to the Millbury Leos, they've got maybe $5,000 at any one given point, but they give a lot of that to Mills High School. So they need to know that in two years' time, they want a foosball table and a ping pong table table. Um, you know, the, I actually talked to them at Martin Luther King Day, and they gave me a whole shopping list of what they'd like to see. But they need to know what those costs are so they can begin budgeting, even if it's two years out. And that's what I'd like to see. Uh, can, to follow up on that, um, I know there were a number of things in our budget, items in our budget for the rec center. Um, and obviously the, the bridge loan from the county is uh, probably the, the key to, to getting this going. But I know there were a couple of um, parcels that we had identified as surplus property where um, oh, maybe we should wait if SB 50 gets approved and those would be a lot more valuable as they could be uh, fourplexes. Um, but uh, what, what's the status on, on that process and um, the other pieces of the funding puzzle coming together. So in, in terms of the surplus property, um, we uh, had two properties that we surplused. We received information back from the um, high school district. So we need to sit down with the high school district and discuss, you know, their desire to purchase the property. Um, once we exhaust that, then we can move forward. We're working on an RFP uh, to solicit um, uh, a real estate broker for us. Um, so that process, I'll have to check with community development. It should be coming out within the next month or two. Some of this is, is some of this, quite frankly, has been delayed because of the fact that you know we were looking at a a forty three million dollar, forty five million dollar recreation center, and so now that we're getting reality um, to the building and and working with Swinerton and the RFQ and the RFP, we will know more about what we can do within the the, the thirty million our budget. Once it becomes real, then we plan on being very aggressive uh, in our fundraising for FF&E and augmenting our, our finances with the sale of the property. But until we can get a handle on reality, which we are now, um, there was really no use in going out to try to solicit funds and fundraising and money for what, in essence, people would think of as a phantom project that, you know, are you ever going to build it? So I hope that answers your question. So understood. Yeah. Okay. So we will aggressively in the next probably three to four months start on that I want to make path sure that again. It doesn't interrupt the timeline in, in any way. Yeah, no, it, it will not. Yeah. All right. And um, and I think you also had mentioned, maybe this was in the Mayor's Civic Coordinating Council meeting or at another point, that we have actually received the development impact fees from TOD2. Um, that is correct. So uh, part of the development impact fees that would go towards this, um, we received a check for a little over $60 million um, in development impact fees through the um, fees negotiated in the development agreement. So that revenue is is actually in the city's hands now. Great. Okay. Thank you. Looking positive. All right. Um, you know, this is only an informational item, so we do not need to take a vote on this. Um, but if there are no other questions, we will move on. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs>
Okay. Um, next we have uh, council comments. Um, so maybe we can begin with uh, Councilman Lee. I, so um, MTC and ABAG's are going to have, I don't, what do you call it, retreats? I don't know what do you call them. Workshops. Workshops, yeah, all day workshops uh, on Thursday, MT, MCTV, MCT, MTC, and then uh, MTC and ABAG, because MTC needs extra, they need extra time to get their, their act together, so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> then, um, so one of the important the important issue right now is the uh, um, um, the Bay Area the Bay Area Plan. What are it called again? Bay Plan, plan, plan Bay Area. Like a, a 50, uh, 2050, 2050. 2050. Yeah, uh, they're calling it 2050. Um, and so they're going to go around again and uh, talk to the other cities and have workshops. Uh, and then the RENA, uh, which is the regional housing um, allocations, meaning that's the amount of housing that each city is, should be committed to building, um, is that uh, that process is starting again. Um, so that's a very important process. Uh, again, and also uh, this uh, Saturday is the uh, San Francisco Chinese New Year Parade and Mills Dragon Team will be in that parade. Um, they did a preview at uh, this last Sunday. They were, they were fantastic. These kids, they uh, build their own lion head. Last year they got the, an exceptional award. Uh, which is very uh, prestigious, um, and I'm hoping. And so, again, thank staff and uh, all of the uh, Millbrae Culture Committee and all of the participants, um, and and um, thank you to the sheriffs and the fire and uh, and everybody who participated. And it was about I say about all total about four thousand people. Um, maybe conservatively, and um, during the parade, maybe about 23, 2,200 people, which is much bigger than the past we've ever had. So, um, and thanks to our city manager, we, we started off with a bang. So, <laughs> literally. <laughs> and uh, so I think next year, uh, and uh, we did order sunshine, and we got sunshine, so that was very nice. Uh, thank you to the city council for your support, um, and I hope that, uh, their, uh, this festival will continue to be a uh, regional festival. Um, and the Lions Club also had their crab feed was uh, successful. Thank you again to everybody who participated in that. Um, and all that money goes towards the uh, community. And that's it for now. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Councilwoman Pepin? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Vice Mayor Schneider? January has started out with a bang. So I was the city representative to Peninsula Clean Energy Strategic Retreat. And, um, you know, they're doing really well. 97% of the San Mateo customers are signed up for PCE's energy program. And then I was in a marketing breakout group where they want to spend money uh, to, and uh, Councilman Lee, I don't know what happened at PCE last week. I know there was a big discussion of nuclear energy, but um, they want to spend money because the public can't tell the difference between PCE and PG&E. I, I kind of spoke up and said, I don't think that's the best use of our funds when we have many public works buildings throughout the county that don't have solar. There are many other ways to do that. Another discussion was the, the rebates that they give for electric vehicles. Yay, that's great, but is that really getting to people who wouldn't otherwise buy an electric vehicle, or is it helping people who have got plenty of money and they're just getting their electric vehicle a little bit cheaper? There was a long discussion about some people there thinking that people change their cars out every six years or so. I got to say, I just got rid of an 18-year-old car, and I'm trying to get rid of a 24-year-old car, so I'm not sure about the eight years. But PCE is doing doing very well, and they are keeping their eye out on what's happening with PG&E and to buy out or not to buy out PG&E. And Wayne, I know they had a very busy meeting last week. For everybody in Millbrae, a ground-based noise meeting this coming Thursday, 9.30 at the Recreation Center. We had three different studies come in over the holidays, the winter holidays, dealing with um, vegetation as a sound absorption medium, as um, beginning to try to get a grasp on contours that would be based on low-frequency noise instead of the current high-frequency air planes and flight noise. Um, so this uh, Thursday's meeting should be a, a 
very interesting. So if you're there at 930, it is not televised. Sadly, um, there isn't the funding for that, but I'll be taking notes. And if you have any questions, feel free to contact me. I attended the League of California Cities Conference. It's the training for new council members and mayors. There was quite a bit of discussion on transparency. And like every time we go out, a big discussion on housing and SB 50. So we've already dealt with that. I also attended uh, last Friday uh, elected officials and staff were invited to San Mateo County's transportation agency's very first update of transportation issues in the county, and they talked about bus service, the new electric buses. There are eight of them, or there's four of them now. It'll be growing by an additional eight. They're still testing them. Uh, one good thing about electric vehicles is they're much quieter, so that reduces your ambient noise level that then people like the airport put their noise on top of. So reducing noise in all forms is actually actually good um, for other reasons than just uh, carbon. Um, I asked him, I asked Mr. Hartnett, who is the executive director or CEO, about seamless transportation since Milbury had just approved it at the previous council. And he said, um, it's no seamless transportation. The only way we're going to get it is if we get more money and we can increase the frequency of our trains um, so that if they get into the BART station at Milbury late, they can always just, you know, there'll be another train, there'll be another BART on that. So that was a little disappointing, not unexpected. Expected. Um, the reason they did that is the governor has signed a bill, and I think it's 795, but don't quote me on the number, and it's to put a, a 0.8 or one-eighth sales tax on the ballot. They're hoping for November. There's some conflict with the one that Councilwoman Pappen mentioned earlier that would be regional-wide, that, that the seamless transportation people talked about. So only one can be on the ballot, apparently. But if this one goes forward, that's where they think they're going to get their funding for things like seamless transportation. And without it, I don't think we're going to be seeing it anytime soon. Um, we also had our quarterly emergency services council. This meeting included having the air quality management board there. It's taken um, almost a year to get staff from the air board to come to emergency services and talk about smoke that uh, basically built up over all of our communities. Uh, I can't speak for everybody in Millbury, but I could barely see across the street after, during the campfire. One of the things that they have done, and they've done it statewide, so there is a statewide set of warning colors and warning advice. This one, and what they mainly spoke with, was how to make schools safer. One of the good news about a, a current bill that's been passed is schools will have grant funding to buy new, better filters for their air conditioning systems at their schools. So if we have another one of those really bad particulate days, um, sheltering in place, sheltering in schools, there isn't money for everything else, and it can't be done universally because each school's HVAC system is different. But they have other wood smoke tips on this. I asked about... Uh, what happens with our public works, with our first responders. And they said, oh, there is work on the way for that, trying to standardize it statewide um, with FEMA's input, too. So maybe there's a little bit of, of national standardization. But to start getting this information out about how to protect yourself in bad air days. Um, and a bit of a discussion about power shutdowns and the costs and the plans for having a power shutdown plan for anybody here in Millbrae who is on medical devices. So if we can bump that up in our emergency services. The other really kind of exciting thing there, we've been waiting quite a while, is Cal Fire rolled out their brand new evacuation plans. And it's countywide. It's probably statewide at this point. And it takes into account, let's look at Meadows. Meadows being our higher risk area, contrary to my thinking along Millbury Avenue. Um, it's mainly because of proximity to wildlands. If Meadows has to be evacuated, and it has to be evacuated through the Meadow Glen neighborhood, which is down here by Hel Lower Helen Drive, how they can sequence evacuation depending on different roads. So that's actually really exciting. I don't know what the next step might be. I don't think they're quite ready to do a city by city demonstration, but um, as we start working on a wildlands, Wildland fire prevention activities. This would be something to have them get there. But it's it's actually really cool. Um, I brought up the fact that we are a pass-through or a cut-through city. So it isn't just evacuating our own people. But in an emergency, people start driving like they're just one, one thought in mind. How do I get home? And if they're cutting through all of our neighborhoods while we're trying to evacuate neighborhoods, that's something they have to add into this model. So with that. Okay, thank you.
Um, Councilwoman oh, Pepin? I have, I have gifts. I have um, progress reports. Okay. City manager. I have one for staff. I also attended um, Caltrain, who told me today, well, you know, through Grand Boulevard, Millbury could have had one of these projects too, but Burlingame has this project that includes a portion of Millbury, and um, it's just something for us to keep an eye on. I'll put one in. And I brought a couple for staff too about these projects. Uh, basically, their staff there said, well, Millbury, if you want to do a Grand Boulevard planning, contact us. So um, we do have some contact information. Um, Oh, bike pedestrian. I've had been to a lot of meetings. I, county bike pedestrian, they gave an update of safe routes to schools. Millbury does not qualify for the funding for it. Although, if we can work with the school district with Lameda Park, and I think you're on the school subcommittee? No. Oh, whoever's on the school subcommittee, um, we get discounted because we make too much money here. And we, we miss out on a lot of grants because of that. And that's a long-term thing that I think Millbury needs to look at and speak up about. But um, Lameda Park has students from San Bruno and Millbrae and is possible our one area that we could do a safe routes to school walk and other things like that. There hasn't been a safe routes to school walk audit since 2013. Uh, so it's been quite a while and I have no idea. Um, I've got out, let, requests out to get the reports from those audits. Basically, do we have things in the sidewalk that are preventing people from being seen correctly? Are plants grown in the wrong place so kids can't be seen? Uh, et cetera, et cetera. And I would love to have the city of Millbrae actually have a walk audit to our schools, but we don't get the assistance of the funding. All right, thank you. Uh, Councilwoman Pappen? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, and along the lines of the Caltrain's Burlingame program, uh, the trees on Burlingame side of El Camino have become just an overall health hazard, falling down and possibly killing people. So they've gotten some money from their, uh, they get a lot of money from those hotels. So they've been required to get a plan to replace all the trees and improve the streets there. So, but we hope to work with them further on that one. I understand the school district meeting. Uh, the school district is finally looking at, um, if you rent their facilities, that you may be able to serve alcohol. It is still a work in progress. Uh, until that time, PTA members will carry their solo cups with whatever inside. We're hoping that the school district will take advantage of state regulations which protect them and they will expand their uh, rules to allow the PTAs to uh, fully fund their events and take advantage of those. Uh, as was stated earlier, the Metropolitan Transportation Commission has a workshop Thursday and Friday to discuss the seamless aspects, among other things, and how the plan 2050 will be shaped and hopefully we can skew that in a different way to include many things that would benefit San Mateo County, including the Dumbarton Rail Corridor. Uh, managed lanes is moving ahead and we will be impacted by those. That is adding lanes to 101. Not taking away, but adding managed lanes, which will involve the clipper card, and we have a long way to go on that, but the funding for that is progressing. It's going to be a nightmare in the development, but hopefully they will improve 101 uh, with less potholes as it progresses. Caltrain, as I said before, their business plan looks like it's going to be Receive some funding from the transportation agency as well as the Sam Trans Express bus through El Camino. So all of our cities are going to be put on alert as to that's coming our way. We have um, several council members here working on making BART accountable as far as serving our community. They, as everyone knows, crime is up, it's unsafe, and it's also unhealthy. They had this week, or just last week, cleaned all the BART stations in San Mateo County, five of them, and once again, they are dirty and disgusting. So unless we get a plan, 
to have regular cleaning and also improved public safety there. It is still very much a problem. I voted no on $35 million of discretionary money going to BART with no strings attached. I thought it should go to Caltrain and we'll continue the fight to make them accountable. Uh, we did receive a study from UCLA regarding why people take transit and why they don't take transit and why the numbers are down. Number one, no questions asked. If you don't feel safe on public transportation, you will not take it. So there needs to be a reality check as far as that transit provider. Also, the big aspect to the seamless, um, as was pointing out by Vice Mayor uh, Schneider here, coordination between agencies. They've been talking about it for decades and decades. They do nothing about it. So uh, trying to get working with our city manager and trying to get MTC, the Transportation Commission, to expand on a resolution they have regarding coordination and then also bringing that to the state legislature to force transit agencies to show us the results instead of just talking around each other and throwing money at them. There was also an article in the paper, San Francisco paper, accusing Sam Trans of dumping homeless people in San Francisco. To be clear, the individuals in question are being forced off the BART train at night, either in Millbrae or at the airport. The airport has decided, the airport, which is San Francisco's jurisdiction, owned and operated by the city and county of San Francisco, gives them bus tokens to return them to San Francisco. We do not do that here. Um, and we are trying to help as many people as we possibly can. And I will point out too, there's a LA Times article recently that the majority of homeless people in any jurisdiction are local. So the actions that jurisdictions take, whether we take it here in Millbrae to provide affordable uh, housing units, trying not to displace people. Other jurisdictions are not doing the same. San Francisco has 70,000 units coming online, none of which are affordable. So we realize the numbers are bigger in jurisdictions, but if you s survey them, they are from San Francisco, and it becomes a local problem as well as a regional problem. Uh, I will say that I had a special meeting with uh, Bank of America, which was interesting. They are working with other credit card agencies to try to do a contactless bank acceptance card for transportation, which would mean you could use your phone to ride Samtrans, Caltrain, or BART. So the convenience of that has shown in New York, London now that it is very convenient for people and they're more likely to, they don't want to fumble with money to get tickets. We hope that that will be pursued here locally, uh, that you could just uh, use your phone or something to get your tickets and ride on public transportation. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Yeah, just very briefly. Really <laughs> um, at the Burlingame event tonight, I was speaking with high speed rail or managed lane staff. They are going to be removing more vegetation in Millbrae, which means greater noise impact from the airport. Well, let's talk offline because if there's any project like that and there's an environmental review, <clears throat> they're obligated to replant and mitigate. Um, they claim there so. isn't a big enough right away. Well, we're open for business and we're willing to partner with anybody. So some of the stuff that I've heard tonight, I think we, we should probably talk about it at our goal setting or have a strategy behind it because just throwing more money at something and saying that's excuses. And, and Millbrae, as small as we are, we do have the largest. We, we, we analyze, we are the only station that is actually multimodal. So it comes with problems and we're looking for partners. Councilman Lee, very quickly. <laughs> yeah, I just want to respond to uh, Vice Mayor uh, Schneider's uh, uh, remarks about the PCE and uh, using nuclear uh, power. Uh, PCE has always promised that they would, um, their goal is to go towards uh, zero uh, greenhouse gas emissions. Um, and we spend, we don't spend our money, even though we don't spend our money on nuclear uh, energy, uh, 
PCE has been um, offered by PG&E to pay $5.3 million for the rights to say that we don't buy uh, nuclear energy. So it seems like a waste of $5.3 million better spent on um, energy saving programs than to have to just pay for uh, marketing rights to say that we don't uh, buy nuclear power, which we don't. Um, so that's what we decided not to, the board decided not to uh, be, um, I guess, uh, um, forced to do uh, spend $5.3 million to give to PG&E. Um, and then uh, also one big announcement, uh, Vaughn Vaporset has announced his retirement, um, or not retirement, he's resigning you know, yeah. of school board. He's the uh, superintendent of the Millbury School Board, and he's planning to uh, resign by the end of this year, school year. I didn't know about that. Well, congratulations uh, to Superintendent Faber, sir, and I uh, look forward to hearing more about that. Okay, uh, last week I attended the Caltrain Local Policymakers Group uh, meeting. There was a brief high-speed rail discussion. They didn't get into any information about the Millbrae Station, but as was stated earlier, the um, EIR will be coming out in February, it's anticipated in April, so it'd be a good opportunity for us to comment. Um, they still have uh, about a $50 billion funding gap that has uh, not closed at all um, since the last time I asked last year. Um, so uh, they, they would like to see more federal funding, but it looks like that will not be the case under this administration. Um, there also was a discussion about the Caltrain um, uh, business plan and different types of scheduling modes. It was a little bit um, quite technical, but sort of a, a discussion about whether to prioritize more um, express service like the baby bullet train or um, trains that stop at more stations. And um, you know, I think it's important to have some type of a balance of both. The, the baby bullet trains are very popular now. They're usually completely full, so that I think shows that it is a successful program. But um, at the same time, there are a number of stations that get very infrequent service, and hopefully that will be improved through the electrification um, process. Um, so I also attended the Parks and Recreation uh, Commission meeting. We discussed some of the same grants that had been discussed uh, here at our previous meeting. Um, as was mentioned earlier, there will be a um, disc golf demo day this Saturday at 10 a.m. at Mosta Grove. They will be along the spur trail um, between Mosta Grove and the Mills uh, baseball field, in case you don't get there right at 10. Um, but there had been discussion, I think, in the previous uh, commission meeting in, I believe, in December, um, that the, the commissioners would like more public outreach before um, committing to this project. So um, th they're doing so uh, this weekend. Um, yeah, I'd also like to thank everyone that helped with the, once again, the uh, Lunar New Year Parade. It was incredibly successful and um, uh, overwhelming crowds. I'd like to thank um, Congresswoman Speer and Senator Hill from attend for attending. Uh, Senator Hill presented us with this um, lovely uh, commendation that we will keep in the um, council room. And um, look forward to building upon that in, in future years. Um, I'd like to close in honor of uh, Bob Richard, a former longtime um, Millbrae resident on, on Lameda Avenue. And I don't know if I should get into this, but um, the, the events this past weekend in, in the Los Angeles area with um, basketball legend Kobe Bryant and the, his daughter Gianna and the other seven um, uh, victims of that crash, it, it just shows you know, how, how we don't know how, how long we're going to be here. Um, and uh, to do the most we can and the best we can um, in our possibly short time uh, on this planet. And I'd like to thank um, my colleagues and our staff for all the work that we do to make Millbrae um, a better place than it was when we, when we got here. And that's what we all strive to do. So with that, we will close and adjourn. To, and we will be back next Tuesday, uh, February 4th, for the goal setting session. Thank you. It's not time right? No. No. OK. Good night.